Welcome to JS for Justice podcast. If live breaking news and following true crime is your thing, then please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like what you see in my videos, please consider giving them a thumbs up. Welcome back, ladies. How are you tonight? Good evening. Good. How are you? Hello, Roberters. <laughs> Welcome, chat. Welcome, chat. We have a very special guest tonight. So, and he just popped on. So, I am not going to, uh, we could chit chat after. Okay. Let's put it that way. So, let's bring Mr. Andy Tillett to the panel. Uh oh. Oh, <laughs> we can't hear you. Oh, One no. second. Oh, no, there, there you are. Go. Now we oh, can't. We could hear for a second. <laughs> I know for a second. It's always audio. No. Nope. We heard you for we heard you say like two words and then it went out again. So do whatever you did before. <laughs> Hey, Ange. Hey, Mr. Positive. Thanks for being here. Hey, Carol. Angie B. For once, I'm not the one that's muted. Andy, it's always me. Everybody has to tell me to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get mugs made that says you're on mute and we can just hold them up. <laughs> Make sure you've got the um under the mic or under the little cogwheel. If you choose your audio, just make sure. I don't think you are muted. No, you're unmuted. I think you need to um, Sometimes go to the cogwheel, right? Yeah, and switch from default back to whatever you're using. That's when it clicks for me, and it works. Yeah, same here. So cogwheel, audio, and then go to the input and make sure it doesn't say default. Choose the one you're using. I think that makes it better. Hey, Julie Labrador and Carrie. Well, hey, I get to say hi to everybody. Whatever he clicked, he clicked it off. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. he's definitely not muted. Because see, I just muted him. And now he's unmuted. I'm, I'm so he's not muted. Yeah. Yay! Hey, hey. <laughs> I had to change a few settings. I'm, 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 I'm terribly sorry. I didn't... Uh, no, didn't you're fine. We have... Keep everyone in suspense there for a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got to say hi to everybody, and we have technical difficulties every night, Andy, so it fits right in with our theme. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> How you been? It's been a minute. It has, it's been a while, hasn't it? But uh, I'm very good, thank you. Very, uh, very uh, just uh, having a great summer, you know, and, uh, and yeah, I, I'm, I'm very well, thank you. Good, good. It's good to see you. So I have two people on panel with me I want to introduce you to before we start. Um, I've got, we call her Potato. So it's Potato <laughs> right here, Deb. And then with the random above, screen name. <laughs> up above with the sore neck, that is Heather. That's Heather J. Hey, that's not actually <laughs> me, but. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're goofballs around here you know that so yeah. it's good to see you and we just got done so let me tell you what we've been doing a little bit so we exactly. did a series on manson and we like dug into all this stuff because all of us had just like walked into it we weren't born at the time so we didn't remember it from there you know yeah. so we kind of were walking into it like we remember seeing his parole hearings but that's about it like he's just this crazy guy who you know killed people that's pretty much how we walked into it and eight episodes later, we were just mind blown by everything that we kind of saw that tied in with everything else. And then coming across your book in the meantime, I was like, holy, like, we've got to ask him some questions. Well, okay, so that's good. Where we're at. Good, good. I mean, I'm, I'm looking for, I'm looking, I'm, I'm really hope that I can answer them to the, to the, 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 the to an acceptable level. <laughs> Yeah, and we've um, we've shared the link to the Amazon to where people can buy the book or listen to the book, which is what we did. We did the audio book. 
because I just don't yeah. have the attention span to sit. But I think audiobooks are great because you can get things done in at the same time. So, in, indeed, yes, it's like it's like listening to the radio. I'm a, I'm a very big. Uh, I listen to the radio while I do uh, make my lunch and things. Um, yes, <laughs> sorry. No, you're okay. So, okay. So, my first question is: You interviewed okay. new people, right? That were mm. associated to Manson himself. Um, I, I spoke with a lot of people who had uh, corresponded with him, or had 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 had, uh, had a sort of proximity to him, and and, and 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 met him in his in his in his last sort of fifteen years. Yes. Um, so. I also they yeah, got but, to know him in prison. Well, yeah, I mean, prison. like, there's, there's a very, there's a, there's a whole sort of network of people who wrote to uh, Charles Manson in prison. Um, but it, it, what he used to do was farm out a lot of, like, he used to get so much mail, sack loads every single day, that it, all the other prisoners would, like, open it and respond pretending they, as him. And there's very few people that sort of got really? to, to actually know Charles Manson. And then if, if he, if, if, if he um, liked the person and started to get a bit of rapport together with them, then he would start writing to them personally. But a, a, a lot of the time, yeah, people thought they were corresponding with Charles Manson, but they're actually just talking to one of the, the other people who held at Vacaville Prison with him. I guess I, I never thought about the massive amounts of mail he probably got. Apparently, apparently yeah. Crazy. He, yeah, more, more people wrote to him than anybody else. He just get like sacks of mail every week you know still in in, in into wow into, into, into this century and, you know because somebody makes like a, a movie or does a new book about charles Manson every four or five years then it sort of renewed interest in him while he was there but yeah I, you know, I, I do believe that toward the end of his time uh on the planet he had become uh a kind of a, sh a shell of himself and i do believe that he had to all intents and purposes lost his lost his mind and gone a bit crazy to be honest with you. When do you think that started to take place for him? I, think, uh, I, I, I do think it was, I do think it was, uh, I can't remember the actual date. I'd have to refer to my book, but there was a time when the, they, they started like placing him in solitary confinement fa on a fairly regular basis. And he was spending more and more and more time like on his own with his like amusing. And I think that was when the, 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 the people started to notice like a deterioration in his, in his, I mean, he, he, like, I mean, obviously he was, you know, a very, very bad person, but he was, you know, somewhat of a, a, a lot of mental fortitude, I think. You know, he was very singular-minded and very, um, very, you know, committed to the, the, the things he did and very uh, charming and stuff. And I think that a lot of, a lot of... Uh, a lot, a, a lot, a, a, you know, a, 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 the, from from what people told me, the way that he ended up being was very, you know, a, a, a very reduced because of the the, the 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 conditions in prison and the long periods of time that he was. I can imagine. And, 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 and those sort of things. Yes. Yeah. So yes. Yeah, sorry. I, I, you, I'm, I mean, Only I like, just think I would. I think I would have deteriorated long before then. <laughs> to be honest, yeah, with but, you. yeah. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of like he did he did manage to hold out for for a very very long time. You know. Yeah, it shows how strong willed his mind actually was. Yes, indeed. you know. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I think that was that was a big sort of part of it. I really do. Um, sorry. Yes. Oh. Uh, uh, was there another question? Was this one else you were going to ask me? Sorry. Well, no, I was going to see if, if the girls had anything to say. Any any comments about Manson or questions? Because I want to move on to Tate after that. All right. Okay. I do have a question. Go ahead, Heather. Okay. So we kind of all came into this, like Jay said, we weren't alive for the case. And we kind mm -hmm. of came into it with new eyes you know, new opinions, things like that. At the beginning, we all thought that he was just this crazy man, just a psycho. And then towards the end, we were kind of like, well, there is a method to his madness. And he, you know, is smarter than we thought. Was that something that kind of happened with you? Was there an evolution of uh, opinions on him? Yeah, in, indeed. I mean, I, I, I first sort of learned quite a lot about Manson through reading the Vincent Bugliosi book, Helter Skelter, which is most people's sort of 
entry point into you know Charles Manson stuff. And because he was the prosecutor who went head to head with Manson, he's very dismissive of him, and he doesn't seem to give him much of an intellectual evaluation. And and, and the more I learned about the Charles Manson the person, and the more I, I you know sort of read about him from different sources, the more I started to realise that he you know he was. He was, a, he, was a, he was a showman, he was a master manipulator, and he was a, uh, he, he, was, he, was a he was actually an intelligent person, just he wasn't, he was just, you know, he, he just rejected mainstream society and what, you know, the, the world around him wanted him, him, wanted him to be. And, you know, I, he, he was somebody who, for better or for worse, I mean, obviously for worse, because a lot of people died, you know, cut his own path through, uh, through the, through landscape and the world that he lived in. I mean, he was a very deprived, unloved person from the very start and uh, managed to sort of, you know, to, I don't know, he learned a lot of things in jail as well, I think. Um, but, you know, his, his manipulative persona and his way of getting inside people's heads was, 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 was very uncommon, I think, for the time. And also, I think one of the, one of the things about this, like, like, like you guys, I'm not old enough to remember the case itself but i think it's very easy to lose sight of the context that the the the, 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 the tape with bianca murders happened in because at the time in 1969 and this is something that, that i didn't learn until later at the time in 1969 that these things happened los angeles people didn't lock their doors they didn't close their windows everything was incredibly innocent and people were you know fairly open. They didn't have, you know, uh, driveways with locked gates at the front of them. Everything was much more like, open. People were much more communicative. Innocent, and, yeah. Yeah, innocent. And then overnight with these two two days on August 8th and 9th for, you know, or, or, or the, the, the Tate LeBianca murders happened, the, 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 the panic and the terror that, that's, that that, you know, spread through the city and through, you know, the entire of America, really, because it, it was such a visceral and shocking completely senseless crime that, mm-hmm. you know, that, that, that began, you know, the, the sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible that it happened in 1969 because it's one of the few decades where things went from the, the ideals that have been set up in the 60s and changed completely. The, 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 the I didn't realize how, how many changes happened in the 60s till I started digging into this case. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. It made me realize all the, I'm like, wow, like we think our lives changed a lot, you know, just over the pandemic. Shit, those 10 years were like, you went from night yeah. to day. And now I see what Manson was talking about when he was like, I get out and it's like this. And then I get out and it's like this. And then I, I can't keep up, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, it's that's insane. I don't think was it like he came out of like prison in 67. It was a summer of love. And he had like his guitar and he was playing like in a very old fashioned kind of style because that's what it was like 10 years previously when he went into jail. And people were just laughing at him. They're like, dude, things are. Things have changed. Right. Even a style, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. A lot of the music that he he made, he wrote his songs in prison. He had these big ideas that when he gets out, he's going to be a star. You know, he's got all these amazing songs. And then when he gets out, the music's completely different. And he's like, wait, <laughs> what? <laughs> like yeah. He kind of had to start all over again. They went from mop tops to psychedelics overnight. You yeah, know? yeah, but it's like, it's like the equivalent of like if you were like a, in a in a rock band and then you went into to jail and you came out and everybody's playing rap music and you're like, well, I said <laughs> this and I'm really good at it. And people are like, I don't care. Rap music's the thing. You know, it's like it's kind yeah. of like that kind of seismic change, you know? Yeah, um, yeah, it's really crazy. I think that whole band's off a lot, you know. But at the end of the day, as well, I mean, his whole thing about being a musician, I'm pretty sure it's just because he wanted to like. Entice young girl. I mean, that's he that, wasn't you know, too bad though, Andy. <laughs> yeah, I think his music was pretty good. <laughs> some of his songs are quite good. Some of his songs are quite listenable. I, I like um what's the one about eating out the garbage can? I think it's called garbage can. That's <laughs> um, it took us it took us a minute to admit that we actually liked the music because we weren't sure if yeah. that we were okay. I but know. <laughs> we got past it. <laughs> Well, Guns N' Roses famously obviously covered You Better Watch Your Game Girl for the spaghetti incident. Which, um, they did? How did yeah, I not I know this? I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah. that either, but that song I, is really catchy. It is. I like that song. And you know what? I'm going to have to check that out because that's one of the GNR albums I never really paid much attention to. 
Yeah, it was like kind of one of the later the ones. Movie. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go yeah, check it, it out. It's, a, it's their album of covers, and on the end of the last track, it ends, and there's like a two minutes of silence, and then it's uh, it's just acoustic. Without That's pretty cool. Oh Denver, my god, yeah. we got to check that out for sure. Yeah. Thanks for letting us know that because we all <laughs> three are like we love music, so. Like the Beatles part of this, the White Album. We've been listening to that and talking about it, and we got Going really crazy deep into over this. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. too deep. Did, mm -hmm. I mean, when you, when you listen to Helter Skelter, can you hear anything in it? No, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> not that I know of. Yeah, it's, it was a completely very... different sound, though, wasn't it, to what they'd done before? Like that whole album was completely different. So Helter yeah, Skelter yeah. was like loud and out there kind of thing. So. It's very, it's very untypical that's what, that's of Tony Arnie history. as well. To yeah. Like, like a metal like that. Yeah. But uh, the White Album is the most popular Beatles album in America. Um, and it always has been since it was released for some reason. Um, uh, but uh, in England, it's, it's, it's a different one. But yeah, the, the White Album is a very pivotal album, which really did inform a lot of... I mean, Charles Manson and his band of followers were listening to that album non-stop like and oh my like, gosh things into yeah. it, like. on lsd on massive on amounts LSD. of lsd could yeah. you imagine yeah, yeah. No, well, with an album like that as well like you can understand how they're all high on lsd and they're completely reading into it to mean something completely different to what it actually meant like i can understand how they ended up following yeah. what he was saying about that album but yeah, the, I, I, but I'm, yeah. I'm laughing, I, don't, I shouldn't be really because it's it's, it's quite a serious subject matter but um yeah, it's, it's it's very like music. Obviously, was like a very big part of the, the Manson and his followers. I mean, he you know, he really did want to be a rock star. Really did yeah. attempts, and he tried out for a number of record labels, and they were just like, "You're not good enough. Your songs don't have that kind of what we need to make the hits. They're a bit weird. You're a bit weird. You know, you're a bit he, weird." He, he, didn't, he didn't take that. He didn't take that very well. By what counts? No. You know? Mm -mm. I well, think maybe, you know, you had... With. Go ahead, Potato. Sorry. I was going to say, he's he was really hard to work with. Like, he wasn't the kind of person that could be easily produced. He wanted to do his own thing in his own time. Didn't like microphones. No. So, yeah. Yeah. Didn't know how to talk to people. And, and mm -hmm. you could tell, like, in his recording session, because I listened to, like, the whole thing, and he was really giggly and nervous. Like, he was a completely different person to like what a you little imagined boy. he would be. Yeah, mm. like he was intimidated yeah. by that kind of situation. He didn't really know how to act with all those people. It, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and think it's, it's, it's strange, isn't it? That like somebody, for someone who was, you know, so charismatic and so, you know, so uh, encapsulated, encapsulated is not the right word, but for someone who was so charismatic to the, the people that were in his immediate, like, surrounds, to then not be able to sort of translate that onto like a, a slightly mm. larger stage is very, um very very strange but i think i think i think what it was is he didn't have a lot of experience it wasn't like ever a gigging musician he wasn't he was just a guy who learned guitar in prison yeah he was then, just kind of winging it yeah, yeah sat around the campfire kind of thing so he'd never he'd never like staged concerts and things like that so i think that that was probably one of the reasons that he uh that, that he um he was he was more nervous when it came to actually performing. and he used to get the, the girls as well would be like a choir behind him they would like sing on cue, like doing the doing certain lines and things. So but, weird. And I think he, I can't remember. I can't remember exactly, but I think he tried to, to get there was a record. There was somebody came to the ranch to record him and and, and the group once. And I think he tried to get the girl. Terry to, Melcher. Terry, yeah. I think it was, it was Terry Melcher, wasn't it? Yes, of course it was. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I remember that. Sorry, yeah. Gap in my in, in my. I remember that. Yeah. No, it's like a lot. Time trying to get them to, yeah. Get them to. Doris Day's to son, no less. Yes, indeed. Yes, that's exactly. I was that. like, what the heck? All these people. It was crazy. It was a crazy deep dive for sure. But we, yeah. we, we you know, yeah. we, we noticed though that a lot of the, the murders themselves were focused pretty much solely on Sharon Tate and others. You know, it was pretty much how it was worded, like the Tate LaBianca murders. So we dug into, you know, we tried to find as much information about every victim as we could. And we went mm. over, you know, their their little life story bio as we could find. There wasn't, a, you know, a ton of stuff out there about a couple of them. But um, nonetheless, it was interesting to kind of learn about all those people um, because we've always kind of just focused on Sharon herself. But I wanted to talk to you. This is what's been really intriguing to me. Um, 
there's been several stories of like Manson coming to the house, knocking on the door, um, that people saw him peering in the windows at the house, things like that. Did you, in your investigations, did you find any connection between Tate or, um, what's her, oh my gosh, I'm having a mind blank, her husband, Roman Polanski. Yeah. Was there any connection before the murders between direct connection between them and Manson? Well, I, 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 I think it's, and this is, this is actually the, the crux of um, my book, uh, the Ch last Charles Manson tapes, it was beyond the correct, actually. So, um, look, I was it, prepared it, too. Check it out. Yeah. <laughs> <Yay. Wonderful. laughs> now, I just, I, I'd also like to point out because, uh, because just in preparation, I did actually bring up a few of my other books, like Helder Skelter, the Manson Murders by the is like the, the, that's, yeah, that's, that's like, like, like the Manson the, 101. Yeah, that's the Manson mm -hmm. 101. Manson, in his own words, the shocking confession of the most dangerous man alive. That came out. He dictated it to the, the guy right companies. That's actually quite interesting. Oh, that's that in, one uh, man. What's his name that wrote that? That's uh, Earl... Noel Emmons. Yes. Did you ever speak oh, with yeah. him? I didn't actually. No. And I, interesting I man. That. Yeah, absolutely. But the, 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 this the, the, that, that's a good sort of one thing. Lynette, Lynette yeah. Reflections a good one as well. This is her uh, Lynette Squeaky from. This is her Squeaky. Sort of, yeah. <laughs> And it's it, it's it, it, there's a lot of like prehistory as that that she tells in here about how she and uh, Manson would would roam around and and, and uh, you know hang out uh, in like camps and trade parks. And she comes at the whole thing from like a you know like what they did on a daily like, basis type yeah. thing. Yeah, there's, there's a lot more like you get more of like the, the, the hippie sort of peace and love kind of feeling from that. Um, but yes, no. So, um, so what um, a number of people uh, have theorized and sort of said that they believe is that Manson knew Tate, and they they'd been introduced uh, uh, from being around on the same sort of party scene, and he would have known who Roman Polanski was because he was a guy about town. And I believe that they the, Man the Manson group had been dealing drugs to the same set, right? So they would have at least been in each other's orbit. I, 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 this is what I believe, right? Mm -hmm. uh, based on what people, have, what people have told me in various interviews that I've done with, with people. And, and that, you know, although you, um, Manson directed them to that particular house that night, he knew, you know, he didn't know that, you know, Sharon Tate would be heavily pregnant, per se. Or, no, sorry, that, that she would have all of her friends around, have a good follower, uh, Freitag Wachowski, et cetera. But I, I mm -hmm. do believe we would have known that that would be a place where they would meet, you know, people who they could kill, who would, you know, were members of like of of the Hollywood elite, and who, and by killing them, it would send, a, you know, a message and start this reign of terror. I, I don't really put much. I don't really. I don't really. The, the whole the whole idea that Manson was trying to spark a race war, I don't put much uh, weight behind that because it's, it's, mm -hmm. it doesn't hold up much water, and that's that's very much something that um, uh, the prosecutor, his name, I forgot, Vincent Buglosi, really pushed very hard. Yeah, Maybe but he had a narrative, you know. Book. But yeah, he had he had a certain narrative he was trying to he was trying to sort of promote. But yeah, I, I, I believe that, that that Manson and his followers, his guard, his 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 his, his band would have. Would, I keep on the band, his gang, his his followers, um, would have would have known Sharon Tate and would have would have been in the same sort of circles. And then that also implies that they would have known that she was heavily pregnant. And you know, to, to think that right. anybody, even if they're out of the mind on LSD or whatever, could they probably could, noticed could her that. though more than she noticed them, being that Absolutely, she yeah. was the, the up and coming, you know, one getting all the attention. They definitely would have noticed her. Um, and she probably maybe even said hi and probably never remembered who they were. You mm, know? Yeah, I mean, like a lot of Munson's uh, uh, group were, were like, yeah, they were, they, were, they were dirty and washed hippies who would go and sneak into parties and steal all the food and the, the booze and stuff around in Hollywood because, you know, they didn't have much at the, the salon ranch, you know what I mean? There's not a lot there. So, you know, it's yeah, so weird sure. that all these Hollywood people's homes were so open to people mm. just coming yeah. over and 
like uh, Dennis Wilson's coffee. house. Like, hey, just come stay with me for like six months. No biggie. I'm just going to go to her. I'll be back. <laughs> just picking up some hitchhikers on the road. You know what I mean? Just you wouldn't, you wouldn't like, you know, the world's very different. Today. It is. But it I is so weird. Day, you just hold a thumb out. Hit your ride from one side of Hollywood to the other. Probably go in, smoke a few. Everybody did it. Yeah, that's that's, that's how things went. Like like I say, this this, this the, the, the Manson murders really did sort of change 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 the focus for the whole of the way that people socialized and and, and really brought a, a close to that particular era in American history. He must yeah. have really liked that effect that he had on you know the entire like of all of society. Cause you know, yeah. you, I heard like people coming in my chat when we were talking about this stuff that had lived, they were teenagers through that time and they were, they were, you know, were on the East coast and they're like, Oh my gosh, you know, I remember, you know, watching him and, you know, wanting to watch his hearings and stuff like that. Like they were intrigued and they weren't even there. So it was like, he must've loved having that effect on society. Uh, well, I, I, absolutely. I mean, you know, what, what, Charles Manson wanted was to be, you know, to be a person, to be a character. Okay, he became a murderous Dylan, right? But that was that was his that was very it was very much his aim to become famous and to leave his mark on the world. I mean, you know, the things that he championed and stood up for: air, air tree, atwa, air trees, water, and animals. Like, you know, it's very very strange that this guy was a, a person who ordered you know others to go out and savagely murder people yet god i thought the same thing into was saving the air the trees the water and animals you know what i mean it's like mm -hmm. yeah it's very crazy but yeah, yeah. He enjoyed it, right i mean when when the trial happened and he was convicted of murder he was the longest running trial i think in american history or california history to that time he, he drank out he wanted the tv because he wanted you know to, to, you know, he got the girls carved next to his head. He got the girls to do the same thing. To, to you know, to, he was he was ahead of his time in many ways in the in the way that he promoted yeah. himself and turned himself into this like celebrity. I mean, you know, for yeah. years, Charles Manson's name was he was like a bogeyman. You know? I mean, he was he was the worst, the most, you know, the epitome of evil. You know, the the, 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 the you know the the the, the, the yeah the, the, the bad, baddest guy in all of America, and he reveled. Yeah, in like that. evil Satan. They call him Satan. Yeah. In the paper, you know, this is the face of Satan. It's just crazy that he was able to manipulate the media in a way to get his messages to these girls while yeah. the trial was going on and have them show up the next day doing the shit. Like, I yeah. think he was playing them at their own game because he was brilliant at it. And they fell right into it. You know, it just all... They, they, oh my gosh, look, now they have their heads shaved. Oh, look, now yeah. they have the, the X's on their foreheads. And everyone's just like, how is this man? Like, is he, you know, is it telepathy? What is he doing? But he was really playing the media at their own game, you know? Yeah, it was yeah, a crazy it, it, stuff. He was ahead of his time, yeah. It, 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 yeah, very much so. And it just the, the idea that he could not just manipulate his, his, his followers, but manipulate, you know, the media coverage and manipulate... <laughs> You know the, the the people's perception of him, and everything, which he, he did and continued to do. I mean, if you look at some of the old the 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 later clips of him when he is interviewed by people for television, you can sort of tell that he knows that they you know they want they they want him to become Manson and start to perform. You know what I mean? So he he did sort of create this performance persona which he would put on the TV cameras, and mm -hmm. you know I, I believe that when the people that he Sort of communicated with and was was friendly with. He, um, you know, he would, he, he you know, he told them and he, he said, "Look, it's all an act, and I'm just doing it to play up." You know. Well, that's what that one guy it. said in an interview. The one that wrote that book, no Noel or Noel. Noel, 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 yeah. Noel, Noel yeah, yeah. He was interviewed and he said that you know I talked to him just like a friend, you know, just like you and I are talking right now. But he was given the reporter that this guy was sitting down with he had just interviewed manson and manson gave him a run for his money and he's like you know how do you communicate with this guy like how do you get he's like i talked to him just like we are now you know so it proves your point that he who he got along with who he trusted and that's who he acted like charlie manson yeah. with and then the, all the other stuff was an act yeah it's it's uh it's it's, it's it, yeah it's, it's it's very it's very interesting to sort of think about what you what 
what you can take seriously that he says and what what not to take seriously because like i say he played into that being like a, a bogeyman and but then to, towards the end i mean if, if it, it, it with uh the, the cause we we I, I i got the very last tapes that he had ever recorded and the in it he was largely oh, wow. in with his guitar and then talking over it but he did a lot of like freestyle stream of consciousness kind of like talking and you know a, a lot of it was very sort of mumbled and and, and and jumbled up and you can sort of tell that you know he was aiming for something and trying to get there but not able to quite put it into words at that time because he was quite far quite far wow mentally yeah some of the some of it's quite disturbing so I've, I've got um i will send you a link afterwards i've got i've got the I've, the audio is is, is published on the internet so i'll send you a link after this and you can oh can awesome so, oh god yeah. interesting i know what i'm going to be listening to tonight <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's awesome um did you guys have any questions um yeah going back to sharon tate and him possibly knowing her beforehand um there was a bit in your book about sharon had been to spawn ranch and ridden horses mm, yes yeah, so she, she, around that yeah, so she she had she had, like you know it was, it was a popular place for people to go and actually just ride horses and stuff. And that was that was something that she did. So, you know, I'm sure that some of the Manson girls and maybe even him, himself would have been, you know, quite hanging around. I, I think when she went riding the horses, I was but sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting lost myself. When she went to ride the horses, that was before the Manson family had moved in back when it was just. A oh, horse okay. Family. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, right. though she'd ridden around that, that terrain, it wasn't at the time when uh not when the family child. was there and she had been there but she yeah she'd been to yeah yeah i think it's place. almost like impossible to think that they didn't cross paths with how everybody intertwined back then seems well, like especially with the, the Hollywood community was quite a small scene you know and if you were in yeah. if, like you know the, 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 they were hanging out with the beach boys i'm sure all the, the the main people of the time would have run into each other at one party or another and or, for or, sure you know, that sense. Yeah, um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure that uh, Charles Manson encouraged his followers to go out and try and meet uh, important people who had influence in order to try and right. get them on, on to the ranch so that he could try and get his career and, going. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, also on the cover of your book, it says. Yeah. Never before seen crime scene photos. Yeah, what did you I, guys uncover? We got for the book. We got a lot of. Um, we got access to the whole file that the district attorney had compiled on, as well as like a lot of the uh, the courts. Um, the, the, the things that were admitted as evidence in court. Like, oh, uh, like the exhibits and stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. There was a, a lot of a lot of stuff in there, and then some of the some of the pictures. Um, some of the pictures were that, that we got would, would, would yeah, hadn't really ever been published or see, seen before. Um, but also, what's the most one, one, graphic thing you saw? Well, I mean, because the, you know the, the the book being. Uh, a commercial nature we couldn't include a lot of the more uh graphic pictures there but right but what did you they, personally they are, see that was like the worst oh honestly, that you like, can't unsee yeah i mean you, you if you look at and i'm sure that they are available on the internet but if if, if, if you look at pictures that were taken uncensored from the sharon tate crime scene which were, were taken in color the police crime scene photos and you see just the amount of blood and blood. the yeah the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the 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 how because she was stabbed so many like times it's 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 horrific because you know you know you're looking at two people two 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 lives that have been ended in, mm -hmm. in, in, yeah a, a horrible horrible scene honestly um, oh those scenes are just gruesome and really gruesome and really really nasty yeah. I mean, I have to say, like it looks like a horror movie, and that it, came before the horror movies, so they probably took that those pictures and <laughs> used them as examples when they make movies because it absolutely looks like a the worst horror movie it's awful yeah, yeah. no it's unimaginable it's, 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 yeah. when you when you when you actually see the photos and you, re you realize how 
really is. It really is. It makes the hairs on the back of your neck stand up. Really, it's, it's incredibly shocking mm -hmm. uh, from both crime scenes. Really, like they they really did. They didn't just you know stab these people to death. They stabbed them repeatedly. Overkill. Yeah. Overkill. Why do you really? think that? Why do you think those girls and not necessarily text, but why do you think that those young girls? had like where do you think that rage came from do you think it was the drugs or do you think it was like manson telling them to be like witchy and i i, I, I all about it i mean the, 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 one of the susan atkins was one of the main perpetrators of the violence at the, the, the certainly the tate household and she you know she'd come from a broken home she said both her parents were alcoholics and that they'd sexually abused her she'd been drifting since the age of about 14 or 15 she probably had many encounters with people and I, I believe that with her in particular there was you know a, a very sort of visceral hatred of, of people with wealth and power and celebrity and that she, she channeled that into her statistic sadistic you know fantasy i guess mm -hmm. I, that's, that's, that's mm -hmm. that, that makes guess. sense yeah and i do th i do think whilst while some of manson's followers are sort of like caught up in his message and that they, uh, you know, blindly believed everything that he said to them. I think it does take something slightly more than that to go through with 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 these murders. I mean, if you look at other people who are involved, like Linda Kasabian, for example, the driver, she, as soon as she figured out that what was going on, she was straight out of there. She was like, there's no way that I'm yeah. doing this because Charlie says so or whatever, you know. But, but again, the, the, the whole idea that was put forward to the public at the trial and everywhere else was that Charles Manson had brainwashed everybody and that he was like this hypnotic guru sort of spiritual cultist and you know his followers would do literally right. anything that he told them to. And I think that um I, you know I don't think that's a hundred percent necessarily the case. They had to have, you know, these in partly these image these these impulses and urges in them in, in some way or other. You know, they, they they knew they were hanging out with the guy who was bad news but you know, most of them were, were drifters and were people who had been sort of left behind by society themselves so that's part part of it <laughs> yeah well there, there were a lot of family members weren't there and, and he would play games and things with them to see which ones of the members were more susceptible to his mm. control kind of thing so then he whittled it down to what five or six who yeah. would then go out and do what he told them to do um and obviously, like you said, Linda Kasabian was, she was fairly new to the family. She'd only been there about two months before she was yeah. sent out on this mission. Obviously, he made a mistake with that one because she didn't get involved with it. Um, and I managed to get away as well. And never well, it was very strange because he, he was just like, he was like, but better take Linda to do the driving because she's the only one who's got a valid driver's license. Yeah. So like, uh -huh. Why he was worried about that when <laughs> they set out of the night. Murders, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely wild, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You don't want to break that law of driving without a license, but murder <laughs> don't is get fine. over the cops when we're on the way to do these murders, do we? <laughs> well, again, again, I shouldn't laugh about it. I, I, I sometimes do forget to give things that. Oh, we do it all the time. Yeah. This is all we do. You have to laugh. So wild. Yeah. If you don't, you'll just, it, it'll yeah. eat you alive. You know, you got to find some humor and stuff. Yeah. May I ask a question? Yeah. Go yeah. ahead, yeah. Heather. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt him. No, you're okay. No, no. Um, so you don't believe that the whole reason they did these murders was for the racial war. What do you think the motive is? Um, so that's that's actually a very good question. How you stopped me in my tracks? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no, no, no. I, 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 I well, think... you already kind of answered it a little bit, like control his control because of his lack of control his whole life yeah, you know I kind, of, I kind of feel like manson was sort of trying to push it as far as he could and see what he could get away with i think that was mm. kind of the sort of crux of what pushing he was the limits yeah I, I think he i think he did you know he i think he just wanted to achieve no, notoriety one way or the other and i do think that he felt that if he ordered his followers to go and do some murders and to create some mayhem that he would eventually be able to say well it was them who did it not me and get away with it and he would have this notoriety and be able to keep his little band together i mean he you know they did 
they did run off to try and lay low in the in the desert afterwards at the uh, Baker Ranch. Um, but I, 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 yeah, I, 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 while the uh, while the race war sort of theory is it, it's quite an interesting thing to sort of explain. It just it just doesn't to me it just doesn't seem to add up so so well. Do you know what I mean? Like I just don't. It just it just seems even a, a bit of a stretch even for somebody like Charles Manson to to, to uh, try and, and perpetrate, you know, kickstarting a, a race. It seems sorry, like sorry. they were more anti-establishment than, you know, anti-race or religion, you know? Just yeah, he, he didn't like how the government was doing things. And I think that has to do with a lot of his institutionalism. Is that even a word? I don't know. But him being institutionalized his whole life, that would be the establishment, right? I mean, he pretty much was raised within their system, behind their bars. And I think that's where he learned to be manipulative, was from mm -hmm. the older prisoners that he was in with at such a young age, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of his criminal knowledge was stuff that had been handed down to him. And, you know, he tried... You know, he tried, he tried his hand at lots of different things. Like when he was a teenager, he was stealing cars, and he graduated once he got to after after he'd been married and he got to Los Angeles. He graduated to like passing off bank checks and tried to become a pimp, not very successfully. Um, he was he was he was he tried his hand at all manner of petty criminal things. But also, another thing that happened to him when he was in um, jail at one point, he did become introduced to Scientology. Uh, mm, we yeah. have yep. a long history for auditing people and um, for uh, you know playing mind games with people. Supposedly, mm -hmm. that's Andy. I live in Clearwater. Oh right, yeah, of course. <laughs> you realize? So, I, I lately, we don't want her to get in trouble. <laughs> no, we always joke about it. We're like, we can't talk about them because I live in Clearwater. <laughs> <laughs> See, we laugh. We laugh probably way too much. Uh, it's Clearwater. It's beautiful. Over. I, I've, I've been to Clearwater and I've, um, I've, I've seen the because mo most of downtown Clearwater, where the what's the, the the hotel that they have, the Scientology hotel is mostly that's like Scientology. Scientology. Yeah, no, I don't go over that way to too that. often. Yeah. yeah, but I have been over there. They own they own a lot of the businesses even surrounding. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The church and all that they're labeled businesses. Yeah. It's mm. a big they own they own probably most of downtown Clearwater, I think. Yeah, that, I've, I've read various articles about that. But to go back to my point, although he yeah. was introduced to it, and I think that uh, Manson would have enjoyed some of the psychological sort of play playing that, that he was never taken in and he never became like a Scientologist or anything like that. But it was just right. interesting that, that that was something that he had he studied it, yeah. Yeah, he did try to join as well, didn't he? But he was rejected. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't read, know I've that. Read, I've read that I kind of differing sort of counts of, as, as to how involved or not involved. He was what, rejected? Uh, yeah, I, I read I, that he had I gone, that he'd he'd gone to them, like... I might, might not have that point right, I'm sorry. Yeah, I read that he'd gone to try and join up and they were just like, no. But he was still <laughs> interested in it, but he, he couldn't get too involved because they wouldn't let him. I guess probably because of the kind of person he was. They were probably like, no, thank you. <laughs> Stay away from us. <laughs> well, he probably well, didn't uh, have yeah. enough money for them. They had, they were going to send him to the the sea, whatever they call that thing. Sea I've, Org. The yeah, the Sea Org. He would have ended up in the Sea Org. Well, I mean, if, if he did, things might have turned out a lot a lot differently. For the True. We're probably True. Be talking about Charles Manson today, yeah. But... Uh... It's weird yeah, it's that one man changed so much, Andy. Like, so mm. many lives, society. Um, gosh, just, you know, he was so well rehearsed in, like, government issues and things that were going on on Wall Street. That floored me when I watched one of his interviews. And he just, out of the blue, started talking about the Dow Jones, and yeah. you know, and I'm just like, what? You know, but he really was a smart guy. So he a lot was. of that stuff when he talks about, you know, the current events and the things in the government, I do think that he was spot on about a lot of things that he, you know, tried to relay um, through to in his interviews. Well, I, you know, I, I, 
in 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 in, in in his extreme environmentalism, I mean, there there is there is a message that that, that does resonate. That, that you know, if we do continue to destroy the world in the way that we are doing, then there won't be much world left. But I mean, his his whole philosophy is is kind of a bit sort of patched together, and it's not very well sort of thought out. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't go as far as to say that Charles Manson had like a particularly you know, uh, well thought out ethos for it. And he was just sort of like, yeah, save the animals. Don't cut down the trees. We've got to protect the water and the air. And you're like, okay. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I mean, that was, that was, you know, that was an extreme sort of thing that he did was to, 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 to want to protect the environment and the living world around us. At all I thought it was energy. interesting when he was asked, if you got out today on parole, where, what would you do? What's the first thing you'd do? And he said that he would, Go save the the water or some shit. I don't something about the forest. I'll save the forest and this and that. And I'm like, this is a guy that like ordered these brutal ass murders of someone who was pregnant and it was horrific. And he's wanting to get one with nature. I mean, go figure. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh... it, it blows one's mind, you know. <laughs> it, 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 it certainly does. But I can I see where those girls would have related to that kind of talk. Of yeah, I mean, being yeah, one and, and with the time. earth. I mean, that, that was very much in keeping with the message at, 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 at the times that they were, they were all hippies and they were all, you know, wanting to, you know, spread the peace and the love and to protect the animals and the environment. And these, these, that was, you know, the, 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 the kind of message that you wanted to put across. But um, yeah, I mean, one thing about him being in jail as well is that like all, all of the, the living Manson. Uh, co-conspirators are all in jail and none of them will ever get parole there's i think it's uh who was it recently i think it was krenwinkle patricia krenwinkle she scares me she yeah, scares, scares, scares me, me. <laughs> they recommended a patrol and then um the um the, the the governor stepped in and said he wouldn't uh wouldn't allow her to have parole it's it's it's, it's a political <laughs> thing it's like for example, like, well, it's, it's yeah, it's a political thing. Nobody wants to be the person to say that one of Charles Manson's followers got released on their watch, even if they don't really represent much of a de 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 danger to society anymore. I guess. Um, I wanted to bring mention, bring your to your attention, Andy, that our friend William Steele is in chat. Hey, Bill. <laughs> oh, um, he's Bill to you, Bill. Uh, yeah. I had such a good time talking to Bill. He's, we he's, had a great he's, he's, talk. He's a great guy. He's got some incredible. He's got some incredible stories. Doesn't he though? Very yeah. interesting. He's very interesting. So we're guy. we're waiting for his A and E show to come out in a couple weeks here. I know. I'm I'm really excited for it. It's going to be uh, yes. Be really yes. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> Yes, and I will be. Uh, there will be uh, some coverage of inmates to roommates that we'll put through some of the uh, the magazines. I think because nice, uh, he's a good guy. He's a good guy, Dennis. For real. yeah. Thanks for being here, William. He comes in hot with his diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> he cracks me up. No, I want to thank diamonds. you for yeah for introducing us to him. We had a great time, and after oh, the show I'm, airs, I'm, we're going to do interview too. Good. I'm, I'm glad. That, I'm really glad that that worked out. We that, 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 that. Absolutely. You know, anytime, Andy, send um, anybody my way. Mm. If, mm, yeah, no, you know, I, they want to do interviews. Yeah. I'm down. Yeah. If, if, you know, if I, if, I, if I come across any other colorful characters, I should certainly. Oh, and you yes. come across them quite often. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But we I, just yeah, got done covering yeah. Casey Anthony as well. So what do you what, know about her new documentary that's in the making? Supposedly, oh, Casey Anthony question. Um, <laughs> well, I know. Switch gears. <laughs> I you know, I had to ask. Know, I, yeah, no, I, I don't personally um, know if that this is a real thing. I, I, I've, I get very confused and I get very wary about things involving Casey Anthony because I'm, I'm, I'm not sure a lot of stuff gets like. Um, a lot of stuff gets put out there, but I don't, I don't, I don't believe it. And I, there, are, there, there are some people who claim to me uh, that, that Casey has like an online 
a hidden online persona, and she creates a lot of these rumors herself and spreads them about in order to try and oh, get wow. more publicity. But I don't know if that's true or if there is someone who is a troll who impersonates Casey Anthony and mis spreads all these things around and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't really know if, if, if there would be a documentary. If there would, I think it would be very... I think it would be a very hot tempo for somebody to, to do to 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 try and you know Casey Anthony my side of the story or or, or whatever. I don't think that she. I would love yeah. to hear her side of the story. Well, it was oh. her new truth or something. I mean, apparently she already gave her truth. So what could it possibly be? Mm. She's only ever done. She's only ever done one interview since she was released from prison, and that was with the AP yeah. News Service, uh, probably about ten years ago. Um. But yeah, no, I like I, I mean, in 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 my line of work, I've 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 been I've, I've reported lots of different stories on, on Case Anthony. I've, you I've, have I've, a very I've, interesting things you've reported on. <laughs> well, I mean, there, there, yeah, there, there's there, there are there's other things that, that sort of surrounding Casey that um, I I I I don't I don't, I don't know about that. That's all things. Like like with any person in the public eye, there's there's a lot of things that appear and are said, but I, I don't actually believe all of them. I mean, I, I have right. personally actually even spoken with Casey on a couple of occasions too. And when I have spoken with her, which I which I don't know what she told me to never contact her again. But um, when I have spoken with her, she did seem fairly uh, fairly down to earth and not particularly crazy in the way that she's portrayed as. A lot, but you know, she does seem to get into a lot of fights. Trouble. Trouble. What my own. Yeah. That's putting it mildly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what are you currently are you currently working on any current cases that are going on as far as in the true crime world? In it, you know something? I haven't been able to really focus on true crime uh, in the last in the last few months unfortunately uh just because of my workload and i've been working on other projects and stuff but i i, I i'm trying to think what the 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 the, the, the cases that i've really been interested in are the barry morphew oh oh yeah uh I, I don't know enough about it but I, I think that there's definitely something there that needs to be found out about and mm -hmm. I became completely obsessed with and I've forgotten the name of the guy I was literally help. You know the South Carolina murders, the lawyer who, who, who Oh Murdo. Murdo Murdo Alex uh, Murdoch. What's yeah, his name? Mur Murdoch. 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 Yeah. I, I, I haven't found dug that into that actually, one too much. Well right, it just it's 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 it's, it, it's, 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 it's a testament actually to this there's this one lady who works for a site called Fitz News, uh, and she's done most of the actual uh, journal journalistic investigation and stuff in that case. And she's a wonderful, wonderful reporter. And her doggedness and her asking the questions have sort of brought this whole thing to light and really helped to expose him. But he seems like an incredibly sinister character. If he was, mm. you know, addicted to opioids, his office was running the district attorney's office, so there's a conflict of interest. As well as well as him working as a lawyer, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, now he's been implicated in the in the deaths of his own son and wife, which is yeah, and that just recently happened. Crazy, yeah. And so I, I think I think that one, and there's, there's apparently there's a podcast which is very good, which I haven't had the chance to listen to, but I will 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 be doing it at some point. I, I do think I do. Um, I, I, I'm very interested in that case. Yeah, that that they're, they're the two they're the two really interesting true crimes from from my perspective. I don't know. Is there anything? I wanted seen, to ask you, well, I wanted to ask you if you recall the Kristen Smart case from the 90s out in California. She went to um, the same college as Scott Peterson and she was missing for a long time. They And they arrested the dad and like a college guy yeah. that walked her home. And that whole trial is just now starting. <clears throat> well, what I found today is pretty interesting a bunch of media outlets have gotten together and um, filed a motion to unseal. They're saying that like 20% of all of the documents affiliated with this case are under wraps and they want to know why. 
And like Heather, you looked up, it was like NBC, ABC, Associated Press. Um, oh, there were scripts, a ton of them. All these, all these media um, networks are getting together and asking them to unseal. And I'm just, I'm perplexed as to why this case would be sealed. I mean, they found yeah. her body and buried in the backyard of his father's house. So did, it's, I'm yeah. just perplexed what's in there. Did it also as well? Didn't they have to? Didn't they do like an exhumation in that in that case? I, think, I, think I don't recall. Good. I don't recall I now. I'm gonna have to revisit. They, they, no, they did. Did they, they Heather? Did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. So, because nobody's ever actually been convicted of her murder, and although she went to the same college as Scott Peterson, I, I don't. I think. I think he was mentioned as a suspect, but I'm not sure. He that... was going to testify, and then they turned around and said, "No, he's not going to." But they did arrest the dad and the son. Right. So the but thing that son killed her and then help is her dad help his dad help the dad yeah but why would they he seal all the, all of that case what strange, would be a, it is I, I, the media wants to know that's for sure yeah well I, I hope we do get some sort of sort of answer yeah that's incredibly intriguing yeah for sure absolutely yeah so that um, was kind of what I had my eye on nothing um I mean we're still watching the Summer Wells case been going on for a year missing little girl. Um, the kid cases, and I just I don't like those too much. It's very I, depressing. Know, you know, it's 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 horrible to to, to think about. Um, I it's just heavy, saw in, yeah. in the in in the chat, Robin said, "What about the Daybell case? That was a, that was a very interesting case too." Mm -hmm. Chad, Daybell, yeah. Uh, yeah, I Daybell <laughs> was <laughs> very interesting. That one's about to go on trial yeah. too. That's yeah. That, when that starts, that'll be very interesting. What was the other big? There was another big trial that started recently that I was. They're all really picking up pace now because COVID, they were all put off. Mm. So now yeah. we've got, you know, Cruz um, right well, now. You know, Nicholas Cruz. To... Nicholas Cruz, yes, that's that's ongoing in Florida, isn't it? Yeah, that's a terrible, yep. terrible the school shooting. Is a... Yeah. All these, oh, the Uvalde, that's yeah. one we've been watching the, the body cam and things on. That was oh. horrible. Uh, the, the, a, a, an incredibly, it seems like there's been a huge, uh, a huge mismanagement of the, the police department and the lack of action yeah. being taken. And like, it wasn't there was like somebody, like somebody actually just went into the school. Could, the cops wouldn't go in, but somebody went in, and got their kids out and stuff. Like it's absolutely yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, again, it's one of the. Like in America, you know, these these terrible tragedies keep happening. And to take it all the way back to August 1969, when the Manson murders happened, nothing like that had ever happened before. And that was what was so shocking about it, because these mm -hmm. people were well known. They were just in their home one night. Somebody walked into their home and killed them in a very, very merciless and horrific way. And a crime like that had never been committed. It was unthinkable for people. To yeah, do. I mean, if you yeah. think about it in the yeah. current day, like, mm. like an up and coming actress being pregnant and brutally murdered in that way, along with her housemates. I mean, I can't even imagine what the shock would be like. But to take that innocence that they had yeah. prior to that, that we don't have right now. If it happens yeah, tomorrow, exactly. we're so desensitized, yeah. you know. But then it was like leave it to beaver one day and then the next day you're you're scared for your life because they're just going in random houses you know a supermarket yeah. owner is there anything more to the la bianca than what we know from the regular like main story or was but, it just that they were unlikely victims i think they were just unfortunately very much in the wrong place at the, at the wrong time but very good law-abiding people who were looking forward i think uh, lena was looking forward to retiring you know at, shortly uh you know they were they were to all intents and purposes normal god-fearing folk and yeah like that just to be picked off at random like that by manson and his group of followers is actually really and really how sad. horrifying like they their kids yeah. found them yeah Oh, and, and, and like their house is just on a suburban street in uh, the Los Feliz area of Los Angeles. It's, it's still like a very, it's uh, it's just it's a very normal like 
actual everyday neighborhood. I mean, when you sort of like go to there and see that in that context, you think, well, this is a street where there's a row of houses and people living in each one of them and stuff. And, you know, the, yeah. the fact that some people just drove down, went into the house and killed people, it's, it's, it's really horrific. Like they have to very close to where um, Kate, you know, Katie Perry tried to buy a nunnery in uh, Los Angeles. It was an old nunnery like building. I'm sorry, that, that, that's very close to where the. the, the, the really? La Bianca houses, yeah. Wow. Now, did you see what happened to Mrs. LaBianca's, um, was it niece? Granddaughter. Granddaughter, yeah. Granddaughter. Did you happen to see it? We we came across this in our No, I, I didn't. That sounds really interesting. Tell me. She was living in Colorado, uh -huh. Denver, and she was involved in a domestic, and she was stabbed to death in oh. the same manner as her grandmother. Oh, wow. I was like... Oh, yeah, we saw a picture. She looked just like Rosemary, too. It was weird. Really did. Yeah, it's frightening. Yeah, it was like a b ex boyfriend or something that was obsessed with her. And he stabbed her in that same fashion. Like, what was it, nine times? Oh, he stabbed her a bunch of times. It was it was really sad to find that. She was a beautiful yeah. girl. Oh, so that, yeah, that's, that's, that's incredible. I, I, I never heard that. That's uh, shocking, really, really shocking. Wow. I think it was actually on the oh, Daily yeah. Mail. You know, the Daily Mail has everything. It really they, does. They, they, <laughs> have very, they don't have a very good team. They have a, they have, they have, they're very thorough in what they do. I have to say the Daily Mail gets the best photos of yes, any they publication. Do. They have the best photos. Yep. And the quickest. Yeah, they get them the quickest. And fast, yeah. They're very yeah, quick. They have, they have a very good, they have a very good photo uh, editor. They have a big network everything. out there. <laughs> Yeah, but they, they well, they, yeah, they do. They have a good day. They, I think the, the 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 Daily Mail and probably the New York Post are the two sort of leading sort of. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The Post yeah. has really stepped up the game too mm. on yeah on reporting stuff. We followed the laundry case, re like the Brian Laundry manhunt and all of that well, madness. We well, followed of course, that. Yeah, Brian Laundry day was day uh, Brian Laundry was uh, had dog on his tail, didn't they? Yes, yeah. yes, we had yep, dog's son on yep. the show. We were like oh, up to our eyeballs <laughs> in that case. Yes. Oh, that the, yes. the Brian Laundry thing was yeah, it was it was it was, it was that was an incredibly that guy was crazy, complete asshole, wasn't it, Brian Laundry? Yeah, what a what yeah, a what a was. jerk. Which uh, which one of dog's son did that? Leland. What's that? Which one of uh, dog's sons did you speak to, Leland? Or um. No, the what's his name? Gary Boy. I'm having a, a mind blank. No, the the stepson, his wife's son. What is his uh, name? Yeah. I can't remember his name. I know um. Oh, I'm having a mind <laughs> blank. Somebody in chat will remember. Uh, Greg. He... Greg. Greg. His Greg, name's Greg. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Greg. Of course. Oh, great! No, that's great. I can't I, believe I, I forgot really about him. Good. Really good. Great. Um, yeah, good. That's good. Yeah, they were down um, here in Florida, and they were staying at like an Airbnb, and we did a live, and we saw dog walk past. That was about as much we got of dog, but he walked behind and said hello. You know, I was like, oh my gosh, but yeah, it was a crazy time, and it's still crazy with the notebook being found. Um, well, it just his his, his supposed justification right in the notebook that she had injured herself in a. Yeah. Like over and over yeah. In a, what a fabulous story. He's clearly he was a, a coward to the very very end of his life. The final. Mm -hmm. But he also got his parents into a lot of trouble now as well because they are likely to face some sort of charges. I think by the time that all this is, and that's one of the reasons that the police won't make a statement about it. Cause I think they're still, I think they're still preparing a case. And I mean, the amount of the amount of resource, you know, FBI and the local police force that went into trying to find Brian. Mm -hmm. when he's, Seems like his parents had an inkling of where he was anyway. Like that. Yeah, that's, like, yeah, that's no joke. Yeah. The manpower. No, because it Wasted. was a full scale manhunt of that. Uh, yeah, you know, that was crazy. For like a four or five weeks, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah, every day. And we were on it every day. It was crazy. Yeah, literally oh, every day. Um, yeah, they lost her voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I lost my voice. We were live so much. <laughs> I, I'm sure he did, but it was very. It was very. I, 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 remember, I did see the coverage when you were doing it today, and I thought this is this is going very well. So yeah, that's that's really good. So and it was it was a really intriguing. It was riveting. Case, wasn't it when when 
when he just turned up back at his house, like, hey, mum and dad, like, all right, where's, uh, where's Gabby? And he's like, whoa. Right. Oh, Hello. Oh, you yeah. talking to I don't know if that's how he talks. He probably didn't. Even. I've just never, <laughs> I've just never <laughs> seen people <laughs> act so <laughs> complacent, you know, like the laundries did about talking to Gabby's family and stuff. It was just, all of it was like nothing we'd ever seen. People still think he's alive. Go figure. Oh, really? Oh, no. <laughs> you know how okay. it goes. I know. I know. I do. Unfortunately, I do know how it goes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that stuff runs I rampant. Mean, if there's just an inkling of a chance, you know, that anything, it leaves yeah, open ended. Yeah. They people run, run with it. Yeah. There are still people spotting Elvis out there, you know. Every time <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, um, do you guys have any um, questions or anything that before we wrap it up? We've been going about an hour. It's been a great, been a great show, Andy. It's always such a pleasure to talk to you. You know, I, I, I really, do, I really do enjoy coming on and talking to Janet. I'm sorry if I talk, uh, talk uh, too much, but um, I, no, I, I, you're great. You're great. Talking about I, I, my work and our cases and the things that we do, and I, I find it fascinating. And uh, you, I, I do love your podcast, Jen. Uh, Jen. I really do. Thanks. I do. We could totally talk to you for hours. I mean. Really? Can I, can, I, can I just show you one thing though? And that is, yeah, uh, you can. Yeah, go ahead. You I got. Can, it. I, have give, I have to give some props to my friend Joe Clements, who brought me this, which is a tea towel. Oh, let me make this famous. Uh, oh, oh I love one. it. It's scumbags. Yeah. We've, got, we've got Charles Manson on there, I think <laughs> and also some other classics like. Look at Aileen. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's yeah, awesome! I love scumbags it. and baddies. <laughs> Yeah, Ted Bundy's on the top, Richard Ramirez. Yeah, yeah, it's got everyone on it. That's awesome. That is yeah. so cool. Just have to say I thank think you actually one of, I think Maligator has that. Yeah. Has got Hanging I got, Yeah, I got Maligator that for Christmas. Oh, you did? Oh, did you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. It is, it is yeah. from the UK, yeah. It's from the UK, yeah. Yeah, I was like, I want yeah. it myself. I know, <laughs> I feel like I'm on a UK show. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Can, 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 I, can I ask uh, where you're from? Uh, I'm from Lincolnshire. Oh, okay. I'm from Derbyshire, so that's next So time. in the Midlands, yeah, so not far away. Yeah, They're both I from the Shures. I saw people in chat saying that we sound the same. Like, probably because we're from the same kind of area. Yeah, we, we're still, well, I mean, you you have more of a, you retained more of a Midlands accent than, than, than I have, unfortunately. I've been away from England for quite a while now, so I think my... Um, I think my, my accent isn't anywhere near as strong as it used to be. How long have you been living over here? Uh, I, I, came to, I came to the US in 2013 as a, uh, I was a posted as a foreign correspondent uh, and I was in Los Angeles and then I moved to New York when I got a new job in 2018. So I've been here for nine years now. So you prefer New York to LA? Uh, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that per se. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 moved, I moved for work, but I, I did really enjoy living in Los Angeles because it's just a very, it's a very different place to like where I grew up and where I was from and everything. I just oh, I bet. enjoyed the otherness of it, you know. But it's, it's very, very different, incredibly different to to New York, where I am, where I am currently. Yeah, you know? it's a very different, just it's a very different place. Like, but Los Angeles, is a very, a very captivating place. It kind of really uh, has its own um, its own effect. vibe. Yeah, it does. It, it, things things happen in a different way to how they do in other places in 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 the world. From from what yeah, from what I gather of, or from my experience. And you know. we're a little, little cold up here in in the Northeast. It's way different. Oh yeah, oh, Heather's yeah. in New Hampshire. Oh, uh, okay. Yes, very good. You guys are um, all from well, the Shures. Shures. New Hampshire, Shires. Lincolnshire, Derbyshire. I always said Shire. Like, I don't know. Derbyshire. I'm, I'm from Michigan originally, and I live in Florida. That's as exciting as it gets. Well, it's, they're, they're, they're very, very different places, Michigan and Florida, yeah. aren't they? I mean, they are. even still in Florida. No, thank God. That's why I'm here. <laughs> I had enough I'm of that. Michigan. Clearwater is a very, very nice part of Florida as well. I've been there on holiday. It's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. I've been there as well. My whole COVID it's an amazing beach. Crowded. It's crowded though now. I Over bet, COVID, yeah. I think we had like 50, 30,000 New Yorkers move to Pinellas County during right, the pandemic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crazy. All you see is New York plates. Well, I can't really? really blame them for getting out of New York. I can't either. You know, the taxes, you know, mm -hmm. you're... 
Yeah, I, I mean, it's I a win-win win situation. But, but anytime you come that. down here, let me know if you come back to the Clearwater area. Oh, hey, you know, I, to... I definitely will. Yeah, I, def I definitely will if I'm, if I'm in the area, I'll, I'll, for sure. Yeah, that'd be probably. awesome. That would be really good. I, I do sometimes get, um, with work, I do sometimes get posted to different places to work on stories and stuff. So, yeah, if yeah. I get a chance to come down, I, I really will. That would be, be really good. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah, and keep me in mind, you know, if you have anybody that, you know, oh, wait, you know do I'll, any I'll, interviews I'll, that'd be great i'll i'll have a think and i'll, I'll see who uh who, who i'll see who i can send you away for sure because like i said william was a champ you know oh, i william, can't wait to have william him on fantastic. again he's a, really, he's, a really, he's a really good guy i mean he really is he's, yeah, he's, he's we good. enjoyed I, him i do i do I, I'm, I'm i'm really excited to see his show when it comes out it's gonna be quite fun. i can't wait either it's I gonna know. be amazing <laughs> august go 18th william, william show <laughs> go <laughs> william <laughs> Uh, very good. All right. Well, I guess okay, we'll well, we'll wrap it up here. And thanks for sharing all the stuff that you did with us about Manson and letting us pick your brain a little bit. It's always fascinating. Sure. Um, thank, thank you once again for the opportunity to, to come on. I, I, like I say, I really do enjoy chatting with you, uh, uh, with Jen, Deb, Heather, all, all, all three of you. And I'm, like I say, I'm sorry if I rabble on a bit too much. Because I do sometimes. No, do don't apologize. You're great. Okay, always a well, pleasure. Um, Yes, well, thank you all, and I shall speak with you uh, soon, I'm sure, okay? Okay, sounds good. Right. Have a good night. Enjoy the rest thank of your you weekend know. that's left. Yeah. Good the, night. The little... oh, well. yeah. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye, Andy. Bye. Bye. Okay. That was awesome. It was, and it was. everyone should definitely read his book because it's so interesting, all the different angles and things in it that I'd never seen before, so yep. definitely worth a read. I could have asked him a thousand questions. I know. I know. Yeah, Once we got on yeah. Casey and then we go to all these other cases, it's like, oh my gosh. Well, even just with like Manson. Oh, I, I know. Like, just with I Manson had, alone. Yeah. I had one I wanted to ask and then he started talking and I'm like, dang, I forgot it. Yeah. I know. <laughs> we could have him on again though. He seems to like coming on the podcast. So that's cool. We could have lots of discussions. Um, I actually met him through the Chris Watts case. So maybe we could we could have a chat one time about Chris Watts. Oh maybe. no, everything goes back to Watts. <laughs> As a matter of fact, there's a channel that went live today. I don't know, they probably are still live because they do really long live streams, but they're doing some interesting stuff over there. So I wanted to uh, share their channel. I don't typically do that, but I really kind of like their discussions. So if anybody wants to check it out, I'm going to put the link. Oh, they just ended 39 minutes ago. So this is just something, if you follow Watts, um, they just streamed one that says, Chris Watts, tire tracks in the back um, and of the back of the house. So here is the link, and this is the Red X Crime Files. I don't know who these people are, but they have some interesting... Um, streams actually. If you're interested in in Watts and in digging into Watts, so I thought I'd share that because I'm gonna actually watch that. Um. Oh, look what an Angie B. Wait, where's Angie B? Angie B. Potato and Andy would make such a cute pair if he's not taken. Lol. Oh, Angie B. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna make her blush. <laughs> Potatoes so would. cute. So cute. <laughs> it was kind of funny having the two um Brits on the bottom. Two yeah. I was like, wow, I almost feel outnumbered, but I had Heather with me. So we were even. <laughs> the day when I'm outnumbered by the Brits will be, I don't know, a day it's for the nice books. having someone who talks like me, to be honest. Right. I bet it is. <laughs> I bet it is. <clears throat> Um, all right. Who else we got here? What is this? Your, your husband wants to move to Florida, Heather Brat, and he hates the heat. Not a oh, good place to go. Good luck with that then. Because <laughs> it's hot as balls here. It's literally <laughs> like, hey, uh, Lori, it's literally <laughs> probably, I don't know, 80 some degrees. Like I was going to go to the store this morning really early and Shell says, 
put on a big sweatshirt and go. <laughs> and I said, it's hot. <laughs> we don't, we're not wearing sweatshirts. Like, that's up north thing. You know, you don't want to put on a bra to go to the store. You throw the big sweatshirt on and you go. Yeah. Here, we can't do that. Lori Staggs is from Clearwater, too. She's my oh, no sister kidding. from another mister. <laughs> Ultra tripping with fruit flies. I'm over here. <laughs> Wafting. <laughs> I just want to hear that other people have fruit flies, too. I saw Potato had one earlier. I have fruit flies. Yeah. You I did earlier. Really. Yeah. Hot and I've got fruit out, so. They oh, well, that makes sense. I don't have any fruit out. Why do I have fruit flies? <laughs> What are they? Oh, this must be the sweetness of me. It yeah, must be that, my is. blood is as sweet as honey. That's what it is. <laughs> oh no, Lori, she was raised there and now she's in Nashville and she hates it. <gasps> Laura W has them ah, too. They're, just, they're everywhere. <gasps> it's making me itch. Where do you live, Laura? What state are you in? I looked like Laura says the humidity. I looked like Monica from Friends that entire summer. <laughs> Chicago. Oh, and you have fruit flies in Chicago. Well, we have them here too. <gasps> Are you getting invaded in your house, April? She said we have gnats in Tennessee. Oh, those bite, don't they? I was going to say, think... don't they bite? We have fruit flies, but I bought those things that come with vinegar in them and they die, Ange says. What things? What things, Ange? I bought a thing on, okay, I bought a thing on Amazon called Ketchy. I should probably get <laughs> other brands as I have them now too. Thanks, Jay. I told, yeah, I told you. Everybody is literally spreading. <laughs> Jay's bugs are <laughs> contagious. They're coming through the mic. <laughs> um, It's called Ketchy. And it has the UV light. Don't laugh at me. This is how desperate I was. It has a UV light at the top. You open the bottom. You put this round thing in. It's sticky. So the UV light attracts them and has a little fan that sucks them in. And then they stick to the little sticky thing. That's brutal. <laughs> it's amazing. But I haven't it caught nearly enough. In. They're not going in it. I'm like, what the hell? So I put it by the sink because they're by the sink. They're all in the sink and they're not in the catchy. I have some in the catchy. So I put jam in the catchy. They don't they still don't go in the catchy. So jam. then I make coffee. And these mofos are like flying to my coffee creamer. So I took the lid, you know, the foil lid on the coffee creamer, and I put that in the catchy. Now I'm catching a little more, but they're still flying around and just sitting. So before I went live, I took a thing of Windex and I went crazy on them. <laughs> I went crazy town spraying them with, with Windex. So there's Windex all over everything in my house and I'm going to have to freaking clean because I just sprayed a whole bottle of Windex into the pure air. Oh my God. You, if you have linoleum floors, you're going to slip on them. I've got to clean. I've got to mop. I've got to um. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> um, so put straight bleach down your drains. Is that what will do it? Drain it flies. Maligators said they sound like drain flies. What is that? What's a drain fly? Drain <gasps> flies that are small flies. They do look like fruit flies, but they're bigger. And they come like literally directly out your plug hole. Oh, how do you get them out, out of your what? Plug your <laughs> what? <laughs> plug <laughs> holes. Plug <laughs> holes. <laughs> Plug holes? Yeah, your what do you call them? <laughs> Our drains. Your Plug. drain hole. <laughs> no, it's not a hole, Tato. Plug They're, drain. Called plug holes. They're called plug holes here. <laughs> plug hole in your sink. So do they like live off like you know leftover food and vegetation in your pipes? Yeah, yeah probably whatever. <gasps> oh Let's god. So I'm gonna yeah. throw up. Are you kidding me? Did you pour bleach on them? No. Oh, do that. Try then. that. I used baking soda and vinegar. <laughs> April Dawn. <laughs> I'm pouring bleach as I type. 
<laughs> she probably is too. Ew, from sewage. From sewage. Yep. Oh. Oh. Oh God, Malligator always has good news. <laughs> <laughs> But she always knows. You know it? Poor Bleach. She does. I got you, Jen Isley. I'm on it. I'm on it. <laughs> I think you're right. These must be gnats instead of fruit flies because I don't have fruit. But they like sweetness. They're like well, attracted to sweet. Don't most bugs? Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> Malligator says, just the facts, Jack. I'm bringing the facts. All right. Well, I guess I'm going to go clean my drains. Ew, I'm going to go clean my plug holes. No. <laughs> hmm, this talk is making me hungry. Hungry? A plug hole, a plug hole <laughs> makes you hungry? <laughs> e. Oh, on that note, we're going to end this. <laughs> Don't drink bleach. <laughs> Jen Isley. Wait, Angie B doesn't have any freaking fruit either. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, they're like fungus gnats. What? Fungus gnats? What are fungus gnats? I don't know, but I'm itchy. Oh my god. <laughs> Drain your plug holes, everyone. It's it's Sunday yeah. night. It's the 31st of the month. Tomorrow's the first. Every month we have to drain our plug holes. Go put some so bleach tonight- down your drain hole. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have it. No, we have a dishwasher, but we don't have a garbage disposal, Ange. So maybe that could be why, you know, like the food sits in that little, like, basket. Oh, Angie B, you are so bad. <gasps> Angie. Oh, drain nuts. Look at this. Drain Nats is in the house. <laughs> drain Nats says, leave us alone. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, dance it out. Thanks, Heather J. Thanks, Potato. Thank you again, Thank you. Andy. And we will see you soon. You guys are awesome. You're too funny. All right, let's dance it out. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye, ladies. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Or the drain nuts. <laughs>